Hey everybody, hope you guys are all doing safe. So this is the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. This is Samsung's new mid-tier smartphone. It retails for around 450 US dollars or whatever the equivalent of that is in your region. So you have a 6.5 inch OLED display, 1080 by 2400 resolution. So in terms of resolution by pixel count, it is not as sharp per se as a flagship Galaxy S22 Ultra. But to be honest, the resolution is still more than sharp enough and it's, this is still a Samsung AMOLED panel so you still get very punchy colors, excellent viewing angles. And while the bezels are a little bit thicker than a flagship smartphone's bezels, they are still really thin in this price range. I mean, to be honest, the last phone that released in this price range was the iPhone SE and if you look at the bezels, it's not even close. Now this phone's powered by Exynos 1280. This is a five nanometer SOC developed by Samsung. It is not a flagship chip but it is still decently powerful, particularly at this price range. You know, I've been using this phone, going on Instagram, streaming Spotify, surfing the web, no issues whatsoever. I haven't encountered any lags or stutters. Even when I play a graphically intensive game like Call of Duty Mobile, this phone was able to handle the graphics pretty well at medium setting. There is no option to go to high settings though, but simply put this chip, it's not a flagship chip, but it's more than good enough for most people. Now screen also refreshes at 120 hertz and you get stereo speakers too. So this is an excellent screen to play games and watch videos. Now moving to the back of the phone, this is where you see some compromises because obviously Samsung had to compromise somewhere to meet this 400 something dollar price. So the back and the sides of the phone are entirely made of plastic and it is very, very plasticky. So it doesn't have that cool to the touch feeling that you get from aluminum or glass but i do like the matte coating that gives it a little bit of grip and the phone weighs only 189 grams and 8.1 millimeters in thickness so it's actually pretty easy to hold now this phone has ip67 water and dust resistance and it supports 5g there's also a 5000 millimeter battery in there which is huge for a phone with only a 6.5 inch 1080p display so that means you're definitely going to get all day battery life maybe a day and a half battery life without any issues however there is no wireless charging now moving on to the optics you have a quad camera system here headlined by a 64 megapixel main camera it has a relatively fast aperture of f1.8 but the image sensor size is really small it's only one over 1.7 inch so it's a small sensor doesn't take in a lot of light but Samsung uses very smart software tricks to compensate for that. So first of all, 64 megapixel sensor, you're getting pixel bin photos. And also this phone will use night mode very liberally. So the results are still photos that look pretty good. I'll elaborate more later. And then you have a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with a 123 degree field of view and F 2.2 aperture. And finally, you have a pair of five megapixel sensors for macro and depth and you guys know my stance on these these macro and depth sensors are pointless so just look at this phone as a dual camera system now around the front you have a 32 megapixel selfie camera in this hole punch display like i already teased that earlier the main camera is surprisingly good at this price range and considering the fact that the image sensor size is so small i think it's a testament to samsung's computational photography skills that it can make the most out of a pretty mediocre main sensor. If you look at these photo samples here, the colors are punchy. There's quite a bit of details. And if you don't nitpick, some of the shots actually look just as good as the shot captured by the S22 Ultra. However, if you really do nitpick, then you see that the depth of field is not as strong. And if you zoom in a little bit, then images are a little bit softer. However, because this camera has to resort to night mode so often, I find that the camera shutter is really slow because you have to wait for night mode to finish. So anytime you're taking photos at night or indoors where lighting is not amazing, you expect to wait up to half a second for the camera app to finish processing the photo because night mode has to kick in. Now night mode does a really good job as you can see from these shots. If you compare it against a phone at a similar price range like the iPhone SE 2022, you see that Samsung shots with punchier colors. However, Samsung's images can look a little bit overly processed, like a little bit fake because it's all computational photography. Whereas the iPhone SE 2022's photos look a little bit more organic, even if it's not as bright. It really comes down to preference. Now that's the main camera, the ultra wide camera, as you can see from these samples, it's, it's okay. 
I mean, you can't really complain at this phone, just something dollar price range. But for me, someone who uses flagship smartphones all the time, I can't say these ultra wide shots impress me because they're really soft on details and dynamic range suffers quite a bit. The selfie camera is surprisingly pretty good. Now Samsung still insists on applying this heavy beauty filter that will lighten and smooth your skin and there's no way around it. You can't turn it off, which is pretty crazy. However, to be honest, I do like having a little bit of that filter on my face because I have a lot of um, wrinkles now and I have blemished skin and I have dark eye circles too. So selfies from a Samsung phone definitely make me look a little bit better than I actually do. As for video recording, the A53 is okay. You can shoot up to 4K30, but there is no stabilization at all at 4K30. So it's jerky as hell. So you have to shoot at 1080 30 just to get decent stabilization. I mean, there's no getting around it. When it comes to video performance, the iPhone SE's video cameras, I mean, there's no way around it. When it comes to recording videos, the iPhone SE's camera is just much better. You actually get stabilization even at 4K 30. But we're talking about just the still cameras, then it really comes down to preference. And for me, I kind of prefer the A53's main cameras. And also, of course, the A53's main camera is more versatile because it has the ultra wide lens. Now you'll notice that so far I've been comparing this phone to the iPhone SE a lot. That's because that's exactly what Samsung's aiming at with this phone. This phone is aimed to take on the iPhone SE. Now, to be honest, if you live in Hong Kong or if you're somewhere else in Shenzhen or parts of Europe, you have a lot more options in this 400 something dollar price range. You have stuff from Poco, Redmi, Realme. They offer excellent value for the dollar. In fact, they often offer better features than the A53 at around the same price. But that's not Samsung's key markets. Samsung's two biggest markets are North America and South Korea. And in both of those markets, Chinese phones don't exist. So in both of those markets, the A53, it's going against the iPhone SE. And it's interesting to see the different approaches that these two phones take to get to this 400 and something dollar price point. Because like I said, you have to compromise somewhere to get a phone down to this price range. And for Samsung, they compromised on build material and processing power because you have a plasticky phone and the chip is, like I said, a mid-tier chip. That's not the greatest chip around. But in return, you get a really good looking, sleek, modern phone. Now the iPhone, on the other hand, gives you a flagship chip. The Apple A15 Bionic is the best chip in any smartphone right now. However, you get a really dated body. This phone looks like it belongs in 2015 because it is from 2015. Now back to that Exynos 1280. I, like I said, it's not a flagship chip, but it's still more than good enough. Like if you're just using this phone to take photos, go on Instagram, send emails, it's not gonna give you any issues. And if you care about benchmarks, the numbers are okay, they're respectable. So ultimately, if you're on the market for a new phone and you can't afford to pay too much, you have to keep your budget under $500, the Galaxy A53, it's a really good option in North America or South Korea because you don't have any other Chinese phone options to choose from. It's either this or the iPhone SE. Now, if you do live somewhere where you can get a Xiaomi or Realme phones, then the competition changes a little bit because you can get a Redmi Note 11 Pro and it'll give you like the same screen technology similar camera performance with a much better haptic engine, Zipier software for a little bit less than this. However, some people will still prefer to buy a Samsung phone over a Xiaomi phone for several reasons, including Samsung has better after sales service because they're more physical Samsung store. Like if you live in London, you can probably find a Samsung store pretty easily, but you might not be able to find a Xiaomi store. So if something goes wrong, you can bring it in to get a fix, stuff like that. And Samsung is promising at least four years of Android updates to the A53. So the phone ships of Android 12, but you're guaranteed to get up to Android 16. You don't get that same guarantee from a Xiaomi or a Realme device. So no matter how you look at it, I think Samsung's built a pretty compelling device for people who don't want to spend more than $500. Now this is not a full review because I've only been using this phone for a little bit more than a day. Consider this a hands-on or first impressions. So anyway, I have a lot more content coming up, including a review of the OnePlus 10 Pro, the global version, and a couple of other upcoming Xiaomi devices too. So if you're interested in keeping up to date with all the latest gadgets, please subscribe to my channel or follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.